Welcome to Inside Healthcare. May is National Stroke Awareness Month. And do you know if you are at risk for a stroke? Knowing your risk factors and the warning signs can save your life. And joining us to talk about preventing stroke is Brad Donaldson with the Minnesota Stroke Association. So thanks for being with us. Thank you for having us on. We really appreciate it. So how do you know if you're at risk and who is at most risk for having a stroke? Well, as for who's at risk, everyone. A stroke affects any age, whether it be prenatal all the way up to what's typically assumed the elderly population that deal right. with stroke. We think of it more of an elderly thing, but... That is the stereotype, and that is true that your risk of stroke doubles every decade after age 55, so there is a higher oh, prevalence wow. as you get older. But stroke can happen at any time. Um, risk factors that contribute to who's more prone to a stroke or not, some are controllable, some are not. Um, in fact, 80% of strokes are preventable. Some of the risk factors that are containable, you know, obesity, physical exercise, getting out there, getting moving, that helps keep your heart healthy, that helps reduce your risk of stroke. If you're a smoker, your risk of stroke doubles just from smoking. Wow. Stop. Stop smoking if at, all, if at all possible, and I know that's a challenge in and of itself, but that helps your risk to decrease your risk to stroke, as well as high cholesterol, maintaining a good, your blood pressure so you don't have high blood pressure. These are all factors that can help contribute to reducing your risk to stroke. So what would be the warning signs that you are having a stroke? We use an acronym called FAST, and we use the term ACT FAST. F meaning facial weakness, if you notice a weakness to your face or a drooping. A is arm weakness, either side, if you all of a sudden start losing strength in your arm or mobility issues. S is speech difficulty, having trouble forming words, having trouble communicating, and T. Time loss is brain loss. Every second that you don't take, medical, take action to get medical attention puts you at a greater risk for worse residuals. Yeah, I think it's been about, what I don't know, maybe 15, 20 years now that we do have some medication. If you get to the hospital as quickly as possible, or even maybe the ambulance mm -hmm. having that on board, the, what's it's it called, called TPA, TPA. Yeah, I yep. was say and it can that. be used yeah. in a, a majority of strokes, not all strokes, but a good number of them, and that has to be identified by a medical professional. But if it's administered within, I believe it's three to four and a half hours, the residuals from the stroke are much reduced versus if it's not. So that immediate Very identification. Very life-saving, yeah, absolutely, and, and reducing disability as well as death, yeah. Absolutely, so we always advise people, it's okay if it's a false alarm. It's better to be safe than sorry later. Call 911 if you think you're having a stroke or if you think you notice someone that may be having a stroke. And sometimes it's like a transient stroke. What's the difference between that and a stroke? A uh, transient stroke or a TIA is a mini stroke. These are little strokes that kind of come and then pass and they, they don't result in long ter a long-term full-blown stroke. But typically they lead up to one. So ignoring those is a very poor choice. It's best if anything like that might have occurred, talk to a medical professional, get some, get some tests done, get some advice, help contain your risks. And listen to your body for sure. Absolutely. You, your body will tell you when something's not going right. Don't ignore it. We, we typically worry about at times being a burden. Like, oh, I don't want to bother a doctor. I don't know that it, that's really... I hear that really, a lot from women especially. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't want to bother somebody. I don't bother somebody. That's what the medical professionals are here for, is to be bothered to make sure that you're okay. It's all right to call and seek medical attention. You know, and having this awareness um, designation is really helpful too, that I think we've seen a reduction in the number of disabilities and deaths as a result of the, uh, just being aware of knowing those warning signs and things like that. Absolutely. And Stroke has been decreasing in cause, like number ranking of causes of death across the U.S. That's fantastic. Which is wonderful. It's led to an interesting other problem that now is, a uh, problem is maybe a strong word, but an occurrence is that now we're working to develop enough supports and systems for individuals surviving stroke because it was more death previously. So our support systems are working to catch up now to the number of people that are now surviving due to better medical care. But you do have support groups and you have resources. What are some of those things available to people out there? Um, there are, we as the Minnesota Stroke Association can help connect individuals to supports and services throughout the state. We have individuals who represent different areas of the state so that we're familiar with the best in the business in their area, whether it be housing issues, legal issues, therapies, whether occupational speech, um, physical, housing issues, uh, even recreational information, and as you mentioned, support groups. That's one of the strongest avenues for individuals to feel that they're, they're regaining their sense of a community. So they don't have to just live in the Twin Cities to be able to get this help and Correct. And we are support. a statewide entity. We have different individuals that represent, whether it be northern Minnesota, southern Minnesota, 
etc. so that we're familiar with the services in that area as well as the culture in that area. And um, we know that there's better treatments available now for people that have strokes as well. Correct. The medical Post. facilities have, have there's certified stroke centers which are mm -hmm. some of the most advanced in Minnesota. They're incredible prof providers. They help individuals at a far greater level than we could have 10, 15, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, as we said, it's, it's, made, it's National um, Stroke Awareness Month, so you have some activities going on this month as well to bring greater awareness to it? Correct. We actually are holding our Strides for Stroke Walk in three locations on Saturday, May 19th. We're up in Duluth, we're in St. Cloud, and we're here in the cities in New Brighton at Long Lake Regional Park. And this event is both to help raise awareness about stroke to the general populace, help advise on, remember, act fast, those facial weakness, arm weakness, speech difficulties. Be aware of the signs and symptoms of a potential stroke. And Even if you're in your 20s or your 30s? And absolutely. In fact, those are the ones that people more often may ignore because I'm 20, I won't ha I'm not having a stroke. That's, that's not the immediate thought process of, oh, this could be a stroke, but it could be. Check with your medical professional. And you've also paired up with uh, Minnesota Twins again? For yes, yep, we're holding our annual strikeout stroke event at the Twins game on May 6th, Wednesday, May 16th. And that we go out there, we help raise awareness to the audience about stroke signs and symptoms. We also, we also honor stroke survivors and how they're forwarding and moving ahead in their journey with stroke to show that stroke is not an end. Stroke is the next phase in a, in a life. What else should our viewers know about preventing strokes and how they can keep themselves healthy? And the main thing is exercise, diet, smoking, stop smoking. Being aware of your blood pressure and your cholesterol counts. Obviously with our society those things fluctuate and all that, but we do have very good medical professionals that can give you advice or dietitians that can help advise how to contain those. These factors, you can't adjust your age. You can't adjust your ethnicity or gender. Those yeah. are fixed things. Family history is really important, I think, as family well. Family history, if, you're, if your family history has been prone to strokes, you are significantly at a higher risk to sustain a stroke. And one of the highest levels of stroke risk is if you've had one already. So even if you've had a mini stroke early, you are at significantly greater risk to continue to have strokes. So be aware of those signs, symptoms, and watch what you eat. Get out and exercise as best you can and don't smoke. Well, Brad, great advice. I re really appreciate your time being with us today. Our pleasure being here. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. And up next, we're going to take a look at what's being done to help make um, our health care more affordable and high quality here in Minnesota. So stay with us. Chris Domine is a husband, father, and athlete because a kidney transplant gave him a second chance at life, made possible by an organ donor. Imagine what you could make possible. Learn more and sign up as a donor. Go to organdonor.gov. Welcome back to Inside Healthcare. Joining us now is Dr. Ron Jankowski, co-founder and chair of the Healthcare for All Minnesota. So thank you for being with us. Thank you for inviting me. So first question, what is Healthcare for All in Minnesota? Well, it's a long title. <laughs> it's a long <laughs> name. But basically, it's an organization that is advocating for affordable, high-quality health care for all Minnesotans. Don't we, isn't that what we want? Yeah. Well, I would think so. Um, the, but in my history as a physician and various other roles I've played, I've seen how this really is not happening over the state of Minnesota and how many people are burdened by health care costs, how many people are unable to seek health care help for their diseases and wind up dying as a result, um, people who are going bankrupt as a result. Um, depending on what study you read, uh, 60 plus percent of all bankruptcies are due to health care costs and most of these people have health insurance and this is unheard of in all the other major industrialized countries. So what's your goal then and what, what do you want to achieve with the organization? My goal is to help everybody in the state of Minnesota get the health care that they need when they need it and in a way that's high quality and it's not going to break their, their, their checking account. Yeah, that's tragic when that happens and one serious illness can do that to families. Absolutely, and yeah. absolutely. Um, I think one out of four bankruptcies are caused by cancer. The uh, drugs are so incredibly high priced that the 
person may have their life prolonged, but they wind up going bankrupt as a result. Um, I've seen many people who can't go to the doctor. I've seen many people who can't afford their medications. That shouldn't happen. It should not happen. No, it and, should not happen. Um, I think about one uh, lady I saw a, a, a bit ago who was 62, and she was retired, and she said, I don't have any health insurance. I, I, I can't afford it. If I, I have a little bit of money saved, but I want to give something to my kids. So until I'm on Medicare, I'm going without health care insurance. And so if something happened to her, she would be obviously bankrupt. Wow. What made you decide, you're the co-founder of the organization, what made you decide to, find, you know, to start it? Well, again, probably because nobody else did. <laughs> um, as we looked at, at health care as, as, as a physician, and one just sees all the injustices. One sees uh, especially the, 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 the working people who are really trying hard to make it and all their money's going for health care or they can't get the health care they need. I see even employers, they can't give their employees raises because all the money that they could have used is going for health care benefits. And so I saw all this need out there and there was really no place for the average citizen to to learn about the problems or to plug in to a, to a group where then maybe they could help do something about health care. There's the Minnesota Nurses Association, mm -hmm. which is a fabulous organization and they're very active in uh, promoting uh, 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 universal health care. Physicians for a National Health Plan, same thing. They're very active. However, those organizations are for doctors and nurses. There's no organization for someone like yourself if you'd said, I've had enough, I want to do something about it, or I really don't understand. Why is it so expensive? Why is it so hard to, to get health care? Uh, what's all the hassle? Um, so our main goal is to help educate the public. How did we get here? Uh, what's our health system really like? Uh, how do we compare to other countries? And um, what can we do about it? And what can we do about it? Well, the first thing to, to do is to get educated. You know, as a, as, a, as a physician, before I can treat something, I have to figure out what the problem is. Mm -hmm. so the, and, and that's very difficult for, the, for most of us because it's complicated. So the first thing to do is get educated. Um, we're trying to help do that with our website, with talks, and various other ways. Um, Un and unless you get educated, any health care bill that's introduced will be opposed by the people who will are now making large profits on the health care system and you won't understand what's going on. So our number one purpose is to educate you. So read everything you can about health care, get to our website, etc. The second thing is we're trying to educate our legislators. Well, if somebody comes in as, as a, to be a legislator in their previous life, they were an accountant. Um, what do they know about mm -hmm. healthcare? And so they're and they're making the laws. So we're trying to work with both sides of the aisle to to help educate them and to tr to try to have our information be as factual as possible. Yeah, that's really key, I would think. There's so much misinformation these days. Yeah, the word fake news is being used everywhere. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We actually have a, a committee that's, uh, we've got economists on that, health policy experts, uh, physicians who have led major organiz healthcare organizations, people very well versed in healthcare who review the, the articles that are out there, review what candidates are saying, and evaluate it for the truth and then try to disseminate that truth. And you have some talks I noticed on your website coming up here during the month of May as well. We do and we love to go out and, and talk to anybody who will listen. We especially like to talk to people who don't have their minds made up, who are saying what, what is all this? How can I learn about it? Uh, what can I do about it? And so we give presentations and we again try to present facts. 
this is where we are, this is what it costs, this is whatever. This is when the cost started, which was back in the 70s. We, at, before that, we were kind of going up at the same rate of increase of all the other major industrialized countries, and then we took off like a rocket. So the next highest country spends 12% of its GDP on health care. We spend 18%. Wow. And they cover everybody, and we don't. You know, and, and um, anything that can be done about trying to reduce some of those health care costs and make them more transparent? and Well, <sighs> transparency doesn't really help that much because you can't really shop for health care. You know, if you're having a heart attack, you can't go say, well, which hospital is cheaper? You need care. And um, also, let's say something is cheaper someplace, but the quality isn't any good. I mean, we go to stores like that, so just price transparency isn't it. Um, we're spending 31% of the health care dollar just paying the bill. We need a different payer system, whether it's single payer or multi-payer, but the current system is not working. Um, pharmaceutical costs are way out of control, medical device costs, hospital costs. Administrative costs have skyrocketed since the 70s when HMOs were introduced. Um, I have a slide I show that shows administration and, and, and doctors' numbers kind of following the same line. And then in about the 70s, the administrative costs take off and the slide looks like the Alps. And so we're spending all this money on administration and that does nothing to provide health care. These people can't put a Band-Aid on. So what should our viewers take away? What's the main message that you want them to know? Get educated. Um, read, read the books that are out there. there are, go to our website. We've got excellent resources. We've got excellent videos and talks on there. So number one, two, three, four, and five is learn about the problem. Don't listen to the existing myths that are out there about you know just tweaking this or just changing a copay is going to make a difference. It hasn't. Health care costs keep rising in spite of all the tweaking. Well, Dr. Jankowski, thank you for being with us. Well, appreciate again, that. I appreciate being here. Thank you very much. And thank much. you for what you're doing, too. Oh, well, you're welcome. Thank you. Still ahead, what one local community is doing to create a healthy community. Stay with us. Chiru has no choice. She and millions like her walk miles a day for dirty water. Together, we can end their walk by providing clean water. Because when you just add water, you change a life. Learn more at worldvision.org. One local community in Washington County is kicking off a summer of wellness with a citywide, free citywide wellness challenge. Let's take a look at Woodbury Thrives and what the wellness challenge is all about. It is such a beautiful city. It's a great place to live and raise a family. My favorite part about Woodbury is the trails and the green space here. There's nothing like it anywhere around. It's a very diverse and vibrant community. I love the fact that it's such a warm, welcoming community. People really care about Woodbury. It is really spectacular. Woodbury Thrives. I mean, it's a great name. It describes Woodbury, but it's also a promise. At Woodbury Thrives, we really want to connect our community to inspire health and well-being for everyone. And we mean everyone in the city. We're all working together to, to make Woodbury an even better place to live. Woodbury Thrives really deals with what we are so passionate about and our, our mission or our vision of the, of the why is really to make sure everybody thrives in the community and it's for all in every stage of life. I like Woodbury because everybody's friendly. We have more than 500 people that have volunteered and participated in our activities so far. With each new activity, we add another 50 to 100 people that are becoming more involved and engaged in, in what does it mean to be healthy. part of Woodbury Thrives because advocating for mental wellness is important to me. Youth struggling with mental illness often feel stigmatized. Their friends and family may not know how to show care. 
as a community, we can work together to reduce mental health stigma and help youth become more resilient. We've been so, so blessed in this, this community because of the fact that we have a great hospital and we have other uh, health organizations here that help us be successful, be healthy. The Workforce Center, you can't be happy and healthy if you're underemployed. So we have highly trained staff that can help people find living wage jobs and, and really prosper. We have a farmer's market which has been going on for many years now and there are so many fresh vegetables and the market is open for six months of the year. Honestly, just from meeting with people to connect, I learned about so much services I did not know that available there. And some of them can be just done for free, a neighbor helping neighbor. In 2018, we're doing this exciting new wellness challenge to a whole other level. Um, so everybody should definitely get involved with that. Get excited, be excited, be involved. Why should I do the wellness challenge? Because it's going to be fun. This is going to be great. It's really designed to go for the entire summer and into fall a little bit. And the idea is that it gets people outside using our Woodbury resources and learning about all of the resources that are available to us within the city. Well, it's something that the whole family can get involved in. I'd love to see them out in the past, just like I am. I enjoy running in this community, and I'm hoping that they uh, uh, will find themselves being involved as well. I'm hoping it's going to be a fabulous thing and, and maybe an annual thing that occurs you know, every year and becomes another big special event, special focus of the community focused around health and well-being. Come have fun and meet your neighbors, meet your friends, make new friends. It doesn't matter where you come from, your age or what your, your interests are, there's going to be opportunities for everybody to get involved and it's going to be a ton of fun. We all need a little help with it. You know, everybody wants to become healthier. Because it'll be fun. There'll be something good to do. And it'll be healthy. I think we will make it the best place in the nation to work, play, and live. Dana Boyle is one of dozens of community volunteers involved with the Woodbury Thrives, including myself, and the 2018 Wellness Challenge. So, Dana, thanks for being with us. You're very welcome. So, um, you know, kind of, we saw a little bit in the video what Woodbury Thrives is all about. Tell us about the Wellness Challenge. What's going on, and why did you get involved with this, I guess? Well, I'll start with that. Um, I retired a few years ago and decided that I wanted to find some really cool projects that fit my personal interests. Um, I'm not ready to uh, just go up north and sit back and chill for a while. I really <laughs> want to get involved. And um, a lot of my work was spent over on the Minneapolis side of town, but I live in Woodbury. So I decided to focus on my own community. And um, I've been doing some work with the parks and trails, but when I heard about Woodbury Thrives, it really hit home for me. Um, I care a lot about whole health. And I, I, I really believe that, you know, doing this as a community is really important. And so um, I followed a lot of the leaders who had started it. I came about a year into the program. And I gravitated toward, of the, of the three kind of streams that we're focusing on, mental health and stress relief is one, um, physical well-being is another, but I really gravitated toward the social connectedness side of things. Um, and so that's the committee that I serve on. I'm also on the leadership committee with you um, at the higher level of Woodbury Thrives. Um, and so talking about the wellness challenge, this is an exciting family-friendly event that we are doing again for the second time. This is our, our, our big, now that we know how to do it, we're, we're really um, unveiling it in a bigger way this year. It's a, it kicks off on May 19th and it ends in October. Uh, again, it, it, it's family friendly. We're looking for all ages to participate as well as seniors. And you don't have to be a family, you can be individual. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I'm an individual and I participate. Um, and so it's, uh, the wellness challenge itself is divided into several different categories. So they're dealing with spiritual whole health, they're dealing with mental health and wellness, physical, and the social connectedness um, aspects of whole health. And that's going to be held, on, you said, on May 19th? Yes, yes. May 19th at the Health East Sports Center is our big kickoff. We're having a walk with the mayor. We have 
food trucks that are coming. It's going to be from 5 to 8 in the evening. It's on a Saturday. And different stations throughout the um, Healthy Sports Center just to get people jazzed. And we are kind of expecting about a thousand people. We don't know how many will come. Maybe it will be more. We and it know. is free. It is free, yes. And we do encourage all Woodbury residents to show up. And um, there's some other events going on throughout the summer that people can participate in as yes. well. Most of them are free, not all of them. but Yep, yep. So um, the Social Connectedness Committee is having its third event on June 18th. It's called Coffee, Tea, and Fun for Free, and it's mainly for people ages 55 and older. Um, that was the area of focus that we started with because we know that so social isolation is you know, a little bit stronger in that community. And we're reaching out, you know, into many different, we're reaching out to the faith communities, um, the senior centers, we have posters in coffee shops, just to try to get people aware of what we're doing. So that's June 18th, um, it's a 9.30 to 11.30 in the morning on a Monday. And um, uh, that'll also be at the Healthy Sports Center. And then on uh, July 24th, we're having a workout in the park at the Y. And then on August 6th, we're having one of our speaker series. We probably ha will have several over the summer, but the one that's set right now is for August 6th. And it's on the aging brain. We're really excited about that uh, evening And what people speaker. should know about the aging brain. Absolutely. And we think that it's going to ap appeal to, you know, everybody really who especially I would say 55 and older and those who care for people who are 55 and older mm -hmm. and then on August 18th we have a ride stride and glide event which is going to be going through one of our parks I believe so again just trying to get everybody together we also are very present at Woodbury Days in the parade um, and trying to get the word out that we want people to not only participate in the wellness challenge, but join us as volunteers if they have the time and interest. And like they were saying in the video, it's going to be fun. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we know that w one of the biggest things about our coffee, tea, and fun for free events is people just appreciated being with a bunch of friendly people. And whether it was to bring along a friend or neighbor that they already knew or meet somebody new, um, I know that we accomplished that in our last year. And few. I understand everyone is welcome and whether you live, work, or even just play in Woodbury. Absolutely. Everyone is absolutely. welcome to participate. Yes, for sure. Final comments for people should take away about the Woodbury Thrives or about the Wellness yes. Challenge? Well, one thing is um, I'm not I'm not big on buying new books. I have a stack of books that I really, really want to get to, but I will give one really good book suggestion. It's been out for a while. It's by Dan Buettner, and it's called Blue Zones. Oh, yes. Yeah. And really, if you read that book, it's very accessible for people to understand the aspects of whole health that we, I think, with Woodbury Thrives are trying to, you know, lift up and emulate. And um, one of those, uh, I just was at my uh, annual physical this morning, and I asked my doctor, who's at one of the Woodbury clinics, if she had one thing to suggest for people to help keep us well, um, what is it? And she said a sense of purpose. So it's togetherness. Great advice. It's purpose. Um, yeah, and doing things in community is a lot easier to keep on a good path. And signing up for the Wellness Challenge is really easy. Just go to the website. Yes, it is. Yep, woodburythrives.org or the Woodbury Recreation. Well, um, Dana, site. thanks for your service and being a volunteer and You're helping out the welcome. community. Thanks for yours, too. Thank you so much. And we'd like to thank you for joining us. And we can hope you can join us next time on Inside Healthcare. We'll see you then, everyone.